Welcome to r slash best of redditor updates, where a family member attempts to kidnap OP's daughter. Our next reddit post comes from r slash relationship advice. My ex and I were married for well over 5 years, together for 10. His mother was a nightmare. She would spend her time belittling me and tried humiliating me. I could take it because I loved my husband and I didn't want to make him choose between her or me. Of course, I would always tell him what she was doing and he would always brush it off as her being a loving and overprotecting mom. When she would say something racist, I'm Hispanic and they're white, he would laugh it off. When she would make a comment about me being a gold digger, even though I earned more money than my ex, he would just say, oh mom. He would also get mad at me if I ever stood up for myself. But the straw that broke the camel's back is when we had our daughter. My mother-in-law would always try to parent our daughter and say that I would do something wrong. My daughter has an irritable colon and she can't ingest any kind of oils or artificial things. And guess what this loony woman did? She fed my three-year-old daughter essential oils to make her go to sleep. She's not anti-vax, she's just very stupid. It sent my daughter to the intensive care unit. At that point, I had it. I confronted my husband who said, she only did what she thought was best. I lost it. I went to my parents and drafted a divorce agreement. His face was like the surprised Pikachu meme when I served him. He didn't know why I was doing that because he thought that we were happy. So now a year has passed and my life was hell. My mother-in-law tried every dirty trick in the book to take my daughter. To name a few, she accused my brother of molesting her. She accused me of neglect. She accused me of taking drugs and leaving them in reach of the toddler. She accused me of endangering my daughter by leaving a random man in my house. The list goes on. During this time, my ex's excuse was that you broke my mother's heart, so you have to understand her actions. She only wants what's best for me. Luckily, I got a good lawyer, and I even got my daughter full-time, minus the occasional weekend visitation. I was able to prove that my daughter was endangered by my ex's mother. I knew that my ex needed to permanently be in my life because of my daughter, and I was learning to live with that. My ex was very cold with me because, again, I broke his heart. But something interesting happened. My ex-brother-in-law got married to an African-American woman, so of course, my ex-mother-in-law flipped. Also, I started dating again. My ex-brother-in-law is a great guy, and he actually stood up for his wife. Go figure, it is possible. I stayed in contact with him because we're friends, he was a mediator, and he fought with his brother quite often. So my ex-brother-in-law actually stood up for his wife, and my ex-husband got his panties in a twist. My ex-brother-in-law basically opened my ex's eyes to how awful he was being, and that their mom treated me the same way that she treated his wife. Finally, my stupid ex started understanding. The new guy that I'm seeing is great. I've even met his parents, and his mother is normal. She treats me like a human being, and she's already invited me to many family functions and tries to make my daughter feel welcome. My ex got wind of the situation through a mutual friend, and guess who's now flipping out? He started bringing me flowers and chocolate, but I don't even like chocolate whenever he picks up our daughter. He sends me cards and text messages with hearts, and who knows what else. Yesterday, my daughter was at my mother's place and I was home with my boyfriend. My ex appears at the front door, crying, clutching an engagement ring, begging me to come back. I said no and that he should go away. He wouldn't and started demanding that I come out to talk to him. My boyfriend told my ex that he would call the cops and in his pathetic fashion, my ex threatened to beat up my boyfriend. I closed the door and told my ex to pound sand. Today, my ex picked up my daughter for a day trip and when they came back, my daughter was asking if I love my boyfriend more than her. Now I'm at a loss of what to do. I already told my daughter that that's impossible because my love for her is infinite and there's nothing bigger than infinite. But now I know that my ex is trying to make my daughter hate me. I'm at a loss because I won't use my daughter as ammunition. But also, what the hell am I supposed to do? I will never return to that man, but I can't take away the father of my daughter. Do you guys have any advice? Then, one day later, OP posted an update. So, I just left my daughter with my mother, and I'm gonna talk to my lawyer again. I followed some advice that you guys gave me and sat down with my daughter to have a chit-chat. So, my mother asked my daughter, Kat, Kat, what do you and daddy talk about? 
Kat just listed many toddler things, like she talks about kindergarten, games, etc. At that point, I was kind of relieved, but then came the big bomb. My daughter says, He also shows me pictures of houses and tells me that I can have two rooms with loads of stuff. I ask her if her dad is buying a new house. Nope. Turns out this nut job wants to take my daughter out of the country. He showed her pictures of beach houses and even bought her a bag so she can put her stuff inside it. Which does explain why so many of her clothes have gone missing. At first I thought that maybe my ex just hadn't told me yet. But no, he told my daughter to keep this a secret because mommy would get sad if she knew that daddy was going away. So I am effing livid. And also sad because I'll have to tell my daughter that she can't live there. And once again, I feel lost. Then, two weeks later, OP posted an update. I didn't have enough evidence to request an emergency child custody hearing. So, my lawyer and I had to work on steps to prevent child abduction. We got a special custody decree that restricted travel options. We also had to be very wary of the signs. My ex quit his job, and I saw through a realtor's page that he put his mother's house up for sale. These facts, along with what my daughter said, was all that we needed to notify law enforcement and tell them to keep an eye out. I couldn't prevent my daughter from seeing her father. I tried to continue business as usual without my daughter noticing something was up. I got a call from the cops regarding the passport situation. My daughter's passport had recently expired, and my ex-husband had tried to request a passport for my daughter without my knowledge. Which is stupid, because even without the decree, I had to be present or submit a notarized document of me stating that he could request the passports. After that, things actually went very fast. He was investigated because he violated the decree, and it was found out that my mother-in-law had bought three tickets with no return date to Mexico. At that point, I could request an emergency child custody hearing. After a ton of documents, I submitted it. In most cases like these, the judge will evaluate behind closed doors. We had a hearing yesterday, and as of now, I have sole custody of my daughter. This is all temporary. My ex has visitation rights if I'm present, but he can't take her anywhere. The investigation of my ex is still ongoing. My ex and my ex-mother-in-law cursed me out, and they said that they would try to contest this, but they had no leg to stand on. My daughter will continue in therapy, especially after this. I won't prohibit my ex from seeing her, but he needs help. This was a really scary and intense two weeks. I don't know if I'll update again, but I wanted to thank you all for your tips and support. I'm really thankful because I'm finally not anxious all the time. Thank you so much. Wait, hold on. Let me get this straight. So, this white lady is racist against Hispanics and hates that her son married a Hispanic woman, so her response is to fly away to Mexico and live in Mexico? Man, racists are just like a special brand of stupid where reality and logic just rolls off their back entirely. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for telling my girlfriend to stop being a b-word and apologize? So, I'm a 25-year-old guy. I've been with my 25-year-old girlfriend, Alexandra, for three years. A few days ago, it was her brother George's wedding and we attended. Us and a few of our friends were at the same table later at the venue. Turns out, my girlfriend's 26-year-old half-sister, Rachel, was invited and assigned at the same table as me and my girlfriend. First, I have to explain the family dynamic. Alexandra's mother first gave birth to Rachel through another man. Then, shortly thereafter, she got pregnant by another man and gave birth to Alexandra. Then, the woman completely abandoned Rachel to have a life with Alexandra's dad. None of them even knew that Rachel existed until their mother confessed to George that she had a daughter before them. So, George reached out and found Rachel, and Rachel was happy to maintain a relationship with them, but Alexandra was completely against it and didn't even want to meet her. As a result, Rachel and Alexandra don't get along. Rachel became introduced to their lives four years back. I also should add that I've met Rachel and we get along well. Since Rachel didn't know anyone else at the wedding, George put her at the same table as me, Alexandra, and our friends. The second Alexandra saw her, her mood changed. Alexandra kept throwing little innocent insults at Rachel and then said that she was joking. Rachel didn't really seem to mind until Alexandra said, So, Rachel, how's your dad? I almost lost it. Rachel's dad passed away when she was 15, and everyone knew that fact. 
Rachel didn't say anything, but just looked at Alexa with an almost pitiful look. She then excused herself and went to get a drink. I turn to Alexandra and tell her that if she doesn't stop being a B-word and apologize, I will leave her right there and then. Alexandra got defensive, saying that I'm defending Rachel because I'm attracted to her and I just want to give her a pity f because she's a poor orphan. She said all of that in front of everyone. I ignored Alexandra for the rest of the night and when it was time to leave, I left Alexandra at home and I went to sleep at my house. Am I the butthole? Also, down in the comments people ask, was Alexandra, George, and Rachel's mom at the wedding? Was there ever any kind of reconciliation between mom and Rachel? OP replies, Yeah, their mom was there, but George made sure that she sat at a table far from ours, so she was out of Rachel's sight. Her mom didn't even acknowledge the fact that Rachel was there, and I don't think Rachel came for reconciliation, but only for George's wedding, since they've been hanging out a lot of siblings. Someone asks, Did you say anything to Rachel afterwards? And OP says, at one point, we were left alone at the table, and I apologized for what Alexandra said. Rachel told me that I don't have to apologize for other people's actions. Then, the next day, OP posted an update. I hadn't talked to Alexandra much after the wedding because I was still very mad at her behavior. I stayed at my house and avoided her calls and attempts to contact me in any way. She came to my house twice, but I didn't answer the door. I wanted to think, and I made the post yesterday because I started doubting if I was right. I now realize I am. I went to her house this morning and asked her to talk. She started apologizing to me for what she said, but I told her that I'm not the one that she should apologize to. She realized what I meant and stopped talking. I kept going, and I told her that it's over between us and to never call me again. She started freaking out and said that she would apologize to Rachel if it meant that I didn't break up with her. I agreed, knowing that I would still leave her even if she apologized because she was only doing it so I would stay. Still, I wanted to hear her apologize because that was fair to Rachel. Alexandra called Rachel right then and there and after a while Rachel picked up. Alexandra started telling her that she's sorry for what she said and that it's been eating her up for the past few days and she can't sleep. That was all lies, and from what I saw, Rachel knew that she was lying. I don't think Rachel even cared to hear an apology, since she just said, Okay, and hung up. Alexandra turned to me and asked, Are you happy now? I told her that I wasn't. I turned to leave and tell her that I'll come to pick up my stuff while she's at work. She starts freaking out, screaming at me that I tricked her into apologizing to a bastard and that it's not her fault that her mother went around making mistakes before she had her and how there was a reason that Rachel was left by her mother. At that moment, I knew that whoever was in front of me was not the same person I fell in love with. I just left. She's been calling me for hours now, but I blocked her. Rachel called, to <laughs> Rachel called too to ask if I'm still alive since she learned from George that I broke up with Alexandra. I told her that it's good riddance and I apologized again for the wedding incident. She once again told me that it's not my fault so I don't have to apologize. So that's it. I'm quite happy to be honest and it's not like I miss the toxicity. Wow, OP. Clearly your girlfriend takes after her mother. What a, what a piece of work, man. Also, I really resonate with this comment down below from Katarina. I wish for Rachel nothing but eternal happiness and love. My god, the girl was abandoned by her mother, lost her father at the age of 15, and has a sister who hates her over nothing. And still, she remains graceful and strong. She deserves everything. Yeah, I agree. Rachel in this story is 26 years old. When I was 26, I did not have this level of grace and inner peace. Rachel seems like a real champion. Our next Reddit post is from r slash true off my chest. I'm a 21 year old man. My friend Joel asked me to join him for a double date with Jean and her friend, Sam. Joel got a date with Jean, but she wanted to make it a double date because she wanted to introduce Sam to the dating scene in a more friendly kind of way. I agreed to it, but my date Sam wasn't amused by the idea of me being her date, but agreed because she was happy with just having the experience. Why? Well, because me and Joel are totally different types of guys. He's a charming, athletic guy, while I'm a chubby, reserved one. It doesn't help that I'm 21 and I'm already balding. The times that I've met Sam at university have been when I'm wearing the same clothes. I have a set of clothes that I only wear for university, sort of like a self-imposed uniform. Every day is different, but I repeat weekly. 
So yesterday, I got my hair cut as low as possible without going into shaving. I fixed my beard, and I have to say, I was looking mighty fine. I got out my brand new clothes. So today, we had our double date at 2pm. I arrived late, but only by 5 minutes. Joel was texting me like crazy until I arrived holding a rose for Sam. I'm a bit corny, but I thought that it would be a nice gesture. Joel wasn't happy for some reason. Jean looked surprised, but Sam smiled widely and her eyes sparkled a bit. We start our date, and Sam and I are having a bit of a blast. We decided to go bowling before getting ice cream, as per Sam's recommendation. Me and Sam got along, but not really enough to say that I like her more than a friend. Maybe taking her on a second date, solo this time, would be nice. As we were hanging out, I could feel glances from Joel and small smiles from Jean. I know that Jean is smiling because Sam is having fun, but I didn't know why Joel was so angry with me. After the date, Joel unloaded on me. How I was cringe for bringing Sam a rose, that I was there to entertain Sam, not distract Jean from him. That I dressed up too formal and too fancy. But I was only wearing a white shirt, a flannel overshirt, and jeans with my converse. He said that I should have just stayed at home if I was going to act like I did at that date. But all I did was talk to Sam, share a meal with her, and went to get her favorite ice cream from her favorite store. Jean was also 100% on board with these ideas. I barely talked with Jean, so Joel had the entire playing field for himself. It's not really my fault that Jean was more interested in seeing her friend happy. Okay, I don't know where the update's going, but it sounds like Joel invited OP expecting OP to act like a loser, which in turn would make him look better, but in fact, the opposite occurred. OP turned out to be a charmer, which made Joel look like a loser. Then, two weeks later, OP posted an update. Let's start with my friend Joel. I explained to him what happened and how it made me feel, and he apologized. It was a bit of a forced apology, but it's been two weeks, and he's actually changed a bit. I explained that he should be more attentive with his dates, and he took it to heart. He's still the same guy, but now at least he tries to actually connect with his date. Jean, well, not so much. She and I started hanging out, but I didn't know much about what happened with her and Joel. Just that it didn't work out, and I'll accept that. Now, as for Sam, well, I asked her out for another date, this time a solo date, and she said yes with a big grin on her face. We went to the arcade and we had a blast, maybe too much. That night, I returned to my apartment at 3am exhausted. That was a night filled with firsts. With that said, we hit it off. I thought that we wouldn't click, but with a few drinks at karaoke, she really loosened up a bit, and we talked for about 3 hours into our second date. We've had two more dates since then, and now we're officially dating. I showed her my last post, and she was amused by all of your replies. That was our slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.